Hey everyone, Nick here from 4playernetwork.com. It's that time again, E3 is just around the corner, and these are my top 5 most anticipated games of the show. My number five most anticipated game of E3 2015 is Soma, a game from the creators of the original Amnesia, The Dark Descent, which is a game that I have played but never finished, and yes, I know that's terrible, it's on my list, trust me. Um, however, I did play all the way through and finish uh, Amnesia, A Machine for Pigs, which was created and developed by the Chinese Room. A decidedly different feel, but I ultimately ended up really liking that game. And it ultimately got me addicted and really into this subgenre of horror that has kind of become huge in the industry these days. That would be the subgenre of hide, evade, and outsmart the horrific monster lurking in the dark subgenre. I would even go as far as to contribute my enjoyment of games like Outlast or Alien Isolation to my enjoyment that I had with Amnesia and Amnesia Machine for Pigs. Um, and to see a studio that I think is so talented taking on a, or creating a spiritual successor to that game, but at the same time placing it in a completely different universe. In fact, this game feels like an amalgamation of Amnesia and something more akin to like Bioshock. Of course, when you, if you remember correctly, when the game was first announced, it was gallivanting about as a space horror game, um, before it was surprisingly revealed that the game actually takes place leagues under the ocean. And from what I've been able to collect or, or, or take from some of the demonstrations that we've seen thus far, it seems to me that the game is about um, some kind of really advanced AI. Maybe so advanced that the robots don't even realize that they're robots. Um, or it could be about aliens. Fuck, I have no idea, honestly. I really don't know. I don't know what's going on. And that's part of the mystery. It's part of what makes me so excited about this game. Um, and I, it's, I couldn't really talk about the game also without mentioning the sound design. Amnesia was really big on sound design, and from what I've seen of gameplay of this game, it seems like the sound design is super important to the team. The world is literally dripping with atmosphere and ambiance, and like any successful spiritual successor to a game like Amnesia should, the sound design completely rattles the senses. Um, I'm really looking forward to playing this game in a dark room with maybe some over-the-ear headphones, um, to just really get engrossed by it. I'm a little worried about demoing the game on the show floor at E3 because, you know, obviously it's going to be in a very loud convention hall and that doesn't usually bode well for demoing games, especially of this genre. Um, but I've seen, I've seen the opposite of that be true as well with Outlast. They found a really cool way to demo that, so who knows, maybe it'll turn out great. Either way, I'm really, really looking forward to finally getting my hands on this game before it comes out in September. Alright, the next game on my list that I'm very excited for from E3 2015 is Mirror's Edge 2. Um, a game that you all know I've been looking forward to for a very long time. I was quite a huge fan of the original Mirror's Edge, despite its flaws, which I'll get to in a second. But this game was actually announced and revealed about two years ago at E3, and at the time, EA was very forward about the fact that the game was very early in development. In fact, it was kind of implied that the video they showed us at the press conference was more of a proof of concept, maybe not even act part of the actual game. Um, in fact, who knows, maybe nothing more than that video even existed at the time. However, it's been two years, so they've had plenty of time to work on it. I'm a little nervous that it may not actually be at the show this year, though, because obviously DICE is going to be there showing off Battlefront, and they may be focusing entirely on that. Either way, we'll probably see this game in some shape or form, whether it's a, a new trailer or whatever, I'm not entirely sure. But two years seems like an appropriate amount of time to have something showable at an event like this. The question now becomes, what kind of progress have they made, if any, since its original unveiling? Personally, I'm kind of hoping that the game takes on a open world or semi-open world structure. Think, uh, think something like Dishonored, which I thought had a really cool world structure. Non-stylized cutscenes would also be nice because God knows those were freaking terrible. Um, it even made it hard for me to really stomach the story. From a gameplay perspective, I'm really hoping that obviously they're going to take a closer look at the first person parkour mechanics that they established with the first one, which were actually pretty pretty good. It worked a lot better than I really expected it to. Of course, it was a little janky, it didn't it quite always work out the way you wanted it to, but it was a great first step, and considering how far we've come and the number of games that have kind of taken that idea and run with it or evolved it or improved it over the years, I would have to imagine that a new Mirror's Edge would control a lot better, so I'm looking forward to that, but as far as changes go, 
I'm really, uh, I'm kind of hoping they actually take a closer look at gunplay. Not, not saying I want my Mirror's Edge to play like a shooter, but I definitely remember those moments where I'm slide kicking dudes and disarming them and then using their gun against them before dismantling the gun and throwing it and just keep running. Like that, those moments were awesome and I really kind of hope they make that super smooth and super intuitive because those were some of the most memorable moments from when I was playing the original game. So maybe take a closer look at that and make it more prominent in the sequel. Uh, throw in some more obstacle courses, a story worthy of the world, and maybe even a co-op mode, and this game could be fucking awesome. Um, but who knows if it's going to be there? Nobody really knows. I'm really hoping it is. And crossing my fingers maybe for a playable demo, because that would be awesome. Next up, I want to talk about Rhyme. This is a game that was announced at Gamescom 2013, I believe. Um, and it garnered a lot of comparisons to classics like Eco and Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, and for good reason. It's a very colorful, very um, upbeat type of game, just at, you know, at first glance. Um, but it takes place in like an open world, and hopefully a semi-large open world. It looks like it takes place on some kind of island. Uh, you play as a young boy um, trying to do something. I don't know what you're- I don't really know what the backstory is here, but you're obviously using things within the world to solve puzzles. Far from an original concept, to be sure, but there is really no denying the beauty and the mystery that's evoked in, in, in the gameplay that we've seen thus far. Um, the world itself is drop-dead gorgeous, holy shit, I don't think I've ever seen anything look so pretty. It doesn't look super realistic, obviously. Um, it definitely borrows from something more akin to Wind Waker. But man, is it gorgeous. It looks amazing. In a lot of ways, too, it seems a little less minimalistic in its presentation than something like Eco. In the announcement trailer alone, we got a really good look at the wildlife, uh, the vistas, the puzzle elements, and the variety in just that two-minute video. Um, and did you see that adorable pig? Holy crap, it looks like something out of a Nintendo game. Did you see him turning that stone sphere and moving the sun in real time to gain access to a magic tower? Like, that looks fucking cool. Honestly, though, I'm not entirely sure if this game will actually be at the show this year. It's been pretty quiet since it was announced, um, but it's been a while, so I'm hoping they have something to show. I'm a little worried because it doesn't strike me as a game that will demo particularly well on the show floor, um, but hopefully at the very, very least we'll get a really good look at it at the Sony press conference. I can't believe I'm saying this, but Fallout 4 is real, and it's going to be at E3. Confirmed. Done. End of story. On top of that, I've been playing New Vegas a little bit because of this, our current supporter of the month, and I'm feeling the Fallout itch again. Um, at this point, the industry is on fire with Fallout love, so I couldn't really leave this off my list. The prospect of a current-gen Fallout in a post-Skyrim world is really exciting to me. And, of course, Skyrim has a lot of critics, and for good reason. But it is still the one game in that series that managed to hold my attention all the way to the end. And despite how you may feel about the UI or the changes to the combat or whatever the fuck, Skyrim was the first Bethesda game that I found to be consistently beautiful in its presentation, thanks to a new proprietary engine that they created. Um, the characters really didn't look like they were made of Play-Doh anymore, which was awesome, and I was constantly excited to explore every nook and cranny of that world because, well, I just loved it. I loved everything about that world. I loved the mythology that they created with it. Fallout 4 isn't the first game to benefit from the design sensibilities that were honed in Skyrim, and it's also the first game to incorporate feedback from Skyrim. It's also immediately apparent this game is going to be beautiful, but perhaps in a different way than Fallout 3 or New Vegas, or even Skyrim for that matter. For one, the world seems to have been injected with a little bit of some cartoony stylization. I can't really, can't really put it, that into words too well. And the color palette has been expanded pretty dramatically. And while I'm not entirely sold on the Boston locale yet, I'm sure I'll fall in love with it all the same. I'm hoping they take a different approach to the menu system this time around, kind of like what they did with Skyrim, because some of the biggest problems in Fallout 3 for me stemmed from navigating those menus. They just didn't feel very intuitive to me. And of course, the loading. There's ungodly amounts of loading in Fallout 3 and New Vegas. Every time you open a door, loading. Obviously, we have new hardware. Hopefully, that won't be much of a problem this time around. Not much has been confirmed gameplay-wise, but the trailer did seem to imply that you would play as a member of the Brotherhood of Steel, or that they would at least play a huge role in the game. Not really sure how that's going to work out yet, but I'm interested to find out. Um, and of course, Fallout 3 introduced us to the VAT system, which was awesome, um, definitely, 
but I can't help but wonder if they're going to ditch that in favor of some newfangled, cleverly named combat system for the next numbered entry in the series. Either way, I'm really excited and it will all be revealed next week. I'm also very excited to hear the soundtrack because they're always awesome. Okay, so here, we're at my number one. Visceral Games, the team responsible for Dead Space, a franchise that I hold in very high regard and one that I really hope to see more of very soon, is working on a Star Wars game. Not only that, but they brought on Amy Hennig, who is the creative mind behind the story and the characters of Uncharted. Let that sink in for a second. And it's going to be really difficult to talk about a game that I don't know much about at length. It really is. In fact, we know nothing about this game. It's the one game on my list that has no title. Hell, who even knows if it's actually going to be announced at E3? I don't. I'm really hoping it is. Um, it would be a great surprise. Um, this is also why this game has the potential to become my biggest disappointment of the show. What if it looks lame? And, well, that's honestly what people were saying about Star Wars Episode 7 before it was unveiled, and now the hype train for that movie can't be stopped. Um, what I do know is that Visceral knows space. They did it really well in Dead Space. Amy Hennig is one hell of a writer, and between this and Star Wars Battlefront, Star Wars does seem poised for a full-fledged comeback in gaming, and in movies as well. Um, that's the dream, at least. And with Battlefront pushing forward on the vehicular combat and shooter front, I'm really eager to see what aspect of Star Wars will be the focus of this title. I have so many questions. Will it be an RPG? Will it be an adventure game? Will it star a Jedi, a bounty hunter, a smuggler, a princess? I don't know. They all sound exciting to me. Um, what parts of the universe will we be exploring? How will we be interacting with the universe? If I had to wager a guess, I'd probably put my money on a semi-open world, narrative-focused adventure game set in the dark underbelly of society or something. Um, maybe this will kind of pick up the pieces of Star Wars 1313, which was un uh, unfortunately cancelled after showing such promise. Um, maybe we'll even continue down the kind of the path, like tonally down the path that that game was going, because that did look really cool. Um, as of right now, it's a lot of speculation with a lot of unanswered questions, so here's to hoping the, to the game making its debut at the show uh, during one of the conferences next week, and I really hope it doesn't suck. And there you have it, guys. Those are my top five most anticipated games of E3 2015. Uh, and of course, there's a lot more that I'm excited for. It's not just those five. There's so much to see. Um, there's so much to be excited about. It looks like everyone's kind of pulling out the stops this year. Bethesda's doing their own press conference, so is Square Enix. They're even doing a dedicated PC press conference. So we hope you'll be joining us throughout the week of E3 on 4PlayerNetwork.com. Thanks, guys.